Blood for the blood god, skulls for the throne of corn. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Once again, it is time for another episode of Chaos Training. And today was my back and bicep day. So, as most people have noted, my back is uh, probably my best body part. So I'm kind of de-emphasizing it. I only did five sets for my lats today. Uh, and I know that seems like very, very little, but it is enough to stimulate growth. Keep in mind though, I do all the, the deadlifting and stuff on my posterior chain day, and then I do pullovers on my chest and tricep day. So even those stimulate my back. Actually, I feel pullovers a lot in my back. So uh, my arms, really things like my arms and my delts probably need to come up the most as I continue to get leaner. Uh, we're down to 216 today, by the way. Uh, so the scale is, is going down pretty quick. That's what happens when I drop down under 4,000 calories. Uh, Again, the, the scale just tends to start dropping pretty dang quick, particularly when carbs are lower. So we're down to 216, and like I said, I need the waistline to tighten up. So I want to bring up those weak areas, get the waistline tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, again, the loose skin needs to get tighter, and actually it's looking a little better today. Uh, but again, that's only going to happen by getting really lean. So until I probably get to 10% or less body fat, uh, that loose skin is probably not going to fully tighten up. So we're going to keep working at it. And someone had asked me, uh, hey Jason, what are you doing uh, in terms of the cut? Like, do you have a, a time frame? And I, I jokingly, but not really jokingly, said, well, I'm going to keep cutting and getting leaner until my physique is good enough to triple the size of uh, my channel and outreach. I think that's a, that's a good number to shoot for. Right, so people are like, wait, that's not a time frame or, or a scale weight, but it's a number, and it's an objective number. All right, so we did three sets of chins with a 45-pound plate. Uh, we got like eight, eight, and then seven. Uh, shorter breaks are making it very hard to maintain performance because, again, I'm doing non-supersets on everything. So uh, because of that, these workouts can get long if I let them, so I'm trying to keep the breaks short enough to keep these workouts reasonable. Um, so again, the, the arm volume tended to be very high. I ended up doing 10 sets of direct uh, curls today, plus the five sets of all supine grip uh, back work. So we did chins, and then I did two sets of very, very strict underhand grip bent over rows. Uh, so I think we can see there uh, the waistline's tightening up. The shoulders are starting to look a little wider. So I think if I can just keep getting, say, my side delts wider, bring the arms up a little bit, and keep trimming down the waistline and the body fat um, and I don't know how light that's going to be again that number is going to be dependent on, on uh, what I need to grow my business okay so at this point uh, I'm taking that very very seriously that's what I need to do and we are coming along so people who are like oh you'll, you're, you're not doing it but I am you guys are watching it happen right now all right so after after uh, the back work, we went straight into really strict full range of motion barbell curls. Notice when I go strict, and on these I'm trying to lock at the bottom. Uh, first set maybe didn't look as good at that as I wanted. The second set I really focused on locking. So that really is like my left elbow. That is my full lockout. Because I'm actually trying to stretch it on these. But we are doing full range of motion, strict as possible, bringing the bar up to the face so that we do get that extra function of the long head involved. So again, taking the bicep through the fullest possible range of motion, trying to keep it pretty strict. Uh, and to be honest, my biceps felt pretty torched after this. Um, because again, they already had a good pump from the uh, back work. With these really strict barbell curls, uh, pretty much failure sets. Because whenever I knew it was going to get tough, uh, I would slow down that last rep. Tried to squeeze it at the top when it felt like a little bit slower and harder, like no real reps left squeezed it harder and then controlled a little more on the way down and then knew as soon as I got to the lockout at the bottom it wouldn't move again. So we ended up getting like 12, it might have been 11 on the last set, I don't care. It's going to count it as 12 because that's what we got the first two and then we reached failure. Um, my biceps, I was almost worried I wasn't going to be able to finish the bicep work after this. I'm like, oh man, I have, I have like two more bicep exercises and that's if I don't choose to do that easy bar thing at the end. Okay. But I did it. And again, it was it was a little bit tougher accordingly. So right there, that, that last rep. 
and then you guys see it at the bottom. I couldn't, I couldn't do another rep. We hit failure. We hit muscle failure there, and then we did all this other dumbbell work. All right, the interesting thing with the dumbbells, um, because my left side, people who are unaware, a small piece of my bicep was removed by a doctor at this point over 20 years ago now. It's been over, it's been right at 20, a little over 20 years uh, from an injury and, and then it got infected and then I had some necrotic tissue uh, that had to be removed. And it was, you know, about the size of my thumb. So I'm always worried that left bicep's gonna be weaker. So I like to lead with it, but interestingly, I was still pretty much reaching failure on the first couple sets with the right side. You know, so I use the left side, we go to failure, when it's six at the bottom, we're done. Try to just dig through, as you guys see me straining there, um, because I'm trying to, to grind through when it hurts. Because these, these hurt, these hurt. This is a painful exercise in the bicep, uh, particularly like, like the eccentric rep. So I'm just kind of digging through digging in you guys can see from my face and so usually I get about once you see my face start changing I get about three more reps and then it just fails it sticks at the bottom so I always lead with that left side we take the left side to failure count the reps and then try to match it on the right but notice even when I match it on the right with that last rep looks like each time okay so the strength is pretty well matched till I got to the last set and then I came up a rep short I hit failure on the right side I hit failure on the right side a rep sooner than I did on the left. So that at least tells me the work is being applied evenly. And even if the left bicep is a little smaller, what's interesting is that it's not weaker. And what's also interesting to me is that I'm seeing that, that strength, uh, the balance involved there on the preacher curl. Well, the part of the bicep that was removed was in the lower half. Right? It was in the lower half. So preacher curl really works that lower half the most so to me that's just kind of interesting I don't know what that means or what to think about that okay so we came in and we got the work done though um, and again I, I kind of worried when I got through these I'm like can I can I even do more bicep work but I did all right we came in and we did a little bit more uh, we got to get our work in because again I'm only doing them once a week and I have not been doing them Lately, I've been doing an arm day for a few weeks. Now I'm like, let's work in back and biceps. Because I think at this point, things are balanced enough and then everything will get a full week of recovery. And that's kind of the deal. There's one of the things I noticed from my triceps, they were having too much DOMS that they get trained twice a week between pressing and then uh, having their own day. So that's really what I wanted to alleviate. And interestingly enough, even though I did more tricep work on Monday than I normally do because of that, all in one day, I don't have doms um, so that's that's been kind of interesting like my triceps haven't been hurting and at one time when I was doing triceps directly twice a week um, I had doms lasting seven days a week now part of it could be my exercise selection to some extent but I'm still doing stretch position movements uh, but here we have me reaching pretty much failure right here you guys it just sticks at the bottom and uh, when I went to this other hand I got a rep, I failed one rep short. Is it the total residual fatigue or is it that maybe my left bicep might actually be stronger at this point, right? But that's a good thing given, given the injury history there because I would love for it to be stronger. But we st we're still tra obviously training both sides to failure, right? Because when I'm failing on the right side here, Right? It still reached failure also. So we're good in terms of stimulus. Uh, but at this point, I feel like, man, I got a great bicep workout. I could almost stop. But I'm like, no, I want the other angles. Just like with my triceps, I need all those angles. Biceps are the same. Same with my shoulders. These are the, the, the muscles that are going to improve my aesthetics as I get leaner. I need those delts kept. I need all three heads of the delts kept. I need all the heads of the bicep and tricep developed. Got to bring them up. And that means we're gonna have to fight through some pain. It means we're gonna have to fight through some workouts to where we feel like the muscle's too tired to go on, but then we find that it, it can go on. And I get a week break anyway, so I don't care. I'm not worried about overtraining from it because I'm gonna have seven days to recover. I'll be fine. Particularly the weekends, I don't train on the weekends. And so I'm able to relax a lot more. Uh, but the incline curls, I managed like to somehow get to eight reps, I think every single time. 
it's again one of those even the first rep um, felt like it was going to fail because again once that fatigue accumulates and I go to that stretch position it's difficult to come out of it I almost feel like when I'm jerking it but I see on camera it looks smooth but I feel like I'm cheating coming out of the bottom I feel, almost feel like I'm just doing a jerk movement even trying to get the weight started on the first few reps uh, but yeah we got all of them and again another very very uncomfortable exercise particularly for someone who's torn a bicep before um, 20 plus years ago these these are an uncomfortable exercise just like the preacher curls they hurt but uh, again we just fight through it because we need those stretch positions that's again stretching that muscle that's what's going to give me the size that I need and doing it from two different angles and then I finished up with some easy bar curls just because I look jacked when I do these and it sounds funny I just do one set it's a little hard to balance it. I'm just like when I did these last time it's like I looked jack I looked jack this is the most jacked again I've, I've looked. So we're getting leaner, we're getting thicker in the right places. Just keep working on it. Keep improving, keep moving forward. I didn't even want to do abs at the end of this. I was so tired. I did one set of hanging leg raises and my biceps hurt just from that stretch and holding on to it. I'm like, I can't do these, they're painful. Not in my abs, but in my arms at this point after all the arm work. So I did one set, called it a day. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys and gals next time.